Good morning, everybody. Time for Coffee with Rob. As most of you know, I like to do Bible studies from real experiences. And yesterday, I was at PetSmart getting some stuff for the dog and <clears throat> met a lady there who was leaving her church. And what a great conversation we had. At the end of the conversation, she even said, maybe God sent me there. We, we were there at the same time to meet each other, like a divine appointment, you know. Great conversation. <clears throat> but I like to use experiences like that um, to do Bible studies. And so her experience was her pastor said something from the pulpit that disturbed her, bothered her. And so she said, I'm going to leave the church. And I said, well, don't do that. Have you talked to your pastor yet? And she's like, well, no. And she goes, but he is approachable. I suppose I could. I said, and we started talking and we realized like in this day and age, it's, it's very odd or uncomfortable or doesn't happen where we just have big boy conversations. If something's said in the pulpit that you don't understand or you don't like, go talk to your pastor, sit down and talk with him and say, hey, you know, you said this, why? And I'm sure he'll be happy to answer you. If he's not, well, then you may be in the wrong church, but give him a chance. I've probably preached over a thousand sermons and I know I've done well over a thousand Bible studies. And I'm sure within those, uh, moments I've said something that either offended somebody, somebody didn't understand, or somebody didn't like me for. But maybe they didn't get the context. I have had that where after a sermon somebody said, I said this, and I'm like, I never said that. So um, you know, there's all, there's often a misunderstanding, but don't leave the church. And this is what I, the verse, uh, and she is going to have this conversation. Very proud of her. She says, I will have that conversation. That's, that's, that's awesome. So I often use the verse out of 1 Peter 5. So if you have your Bible, you can turn to 1 Peter 5. And this is it. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 8 says this. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And so I often use the illustration that it's very important to be a part of a body or a family or a group that serves Christ. So if you're a part of a group, it's very important. There's protection in a group. There's people you can talk to in a group. There's support in a group. What the devil does, and I use the Discovery Channel for this, I says he wants to separate you from the herd. Why is that? Because if he separates you from the herd, then you're vulnerable. And that's what the wildebeest do, the antelope, the, the, the lions. They, they separate the weak one or one of them from the herd, and then they pounce on it, and they devour it. And so don't let the devil do that. He wants to get you distracted off what's important. That's being a part of the herd. Part of a, a group that's serving God that has the same goal and is focused on Jesus Christ. If he can get you distracted or get you focused off Christ onto the world or into your emotions, then you're going to be vulnerable to attack. But around this, so I would say read these verses. 1 Peter 5, and we can go um, verses 6 through 10. Let's look at those. I have some Greek words here. I'll try to be quick. Um, basically, it says this. Humble yourself. How do I how do I do this? Well, humble myself. Ask myself that I, why don't I agree with what the pastor said or what's wrong? What what did somebody say in the church today that offended me? Because that happens a lot. The church is run by people. People have egos. People have emotions. People have bad days, and sometimes things are said that will offend you. Or somebody didn't shake my hand. I'm leaving the church. Don't do that. Call it a bad day. Go back. Give them a second chance. Or confront that person. Now <clears throat> remember. Golden rule in the church. If you're offended or if something happens, God did not do it to you. God loves you. He cares for you and he wants to care for you. So he didn't do it. Somebody in the, a human being did it. So don't blame God for what a human being did. So let's look at this. Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. So there might be a time of trial. There might be a time of testing. There might be a time of emotional controversy but he will lift you up in due time. Let's keep looking at this. Cast your anxiety on Jesus Christ. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Resist the urge to leave the church. Resist the urge to get emotional. Stand firm. Stand firm on the promises and the word that you have in the faith. Because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. There is nothing you're going through that nobody else is going that ain't going through. We all go through something. And the God of grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you, make you strong, firm, steadfast, and steadfast. To him be power and glory forever. Now, I'll go through the Greek here real quick because I think it's important. 
So humble yourself uh, under God and submit to God. God, okay, this happened. What do you think? So cast your anxieties on him. This is Merimah. This is uh, what you care about, your worries and your anxieties. I says cast it. You just throw it. Have you ever been upset? Been like, all right, this made me upset. I don't know. Throw your clothes on the floor, whatever it is that you're doing and cast your anxieties on Jesus Christ. Why? Because he cares for you. So the same word is almost words back to you. What you care about, what's important to you, what bothers you, you throw it on Jesus Christ. And why do we do that? Because he cares for us. And the word is melo. You are cared for. He is paying attention to you, taking interest in you, and he is concerned for you. And what I like is before that word is the word peri, which means the concern of Jesus Christ is all around you. So I thought that was interesting. That should be encouraging. And then in due time, so there may be a time of suffering. There may be a time that we go through. We have to deal with something. We have to be mature about it, be, become mature believers. And, and if you look at the definitions of restore, you make strong, firm, and steadfast. It's because God is making you, it's basically taking clay and he's molding it into something perfect. And when he's done molding it, it's going to be strong, it's going to be capable, and it's going to be foundational so that he can build upon your experience in your life, even for other people. And the word there is, um, so restore actually is perfect or perfect. The word there is katarizo. It means he's molding you, he's perfecting you. So in this time, he's molding and perfecting you. And then the next word is confirm or sterizo. It is he's planting your feet. He's trying to make you solid. He's trying to make you stand. So he's going to perfect you. He's going to make you stand. And he's going to strengthen you. Strengthen you is thano. He's going to establish you. He's going to make you strong. He's going to uh, make you or give you the ability to accomplish things in the face of adversity. So thano, to make you able to stand in the face of controversy. And then finally, to be steadfast would be establish you. The word themaleo firmly establish you as a foundational believer, a strong believer, so that he can build upon your life and establish you strong, so that in controversy or in adversity, you can be strong in that adversity, and he can build on you. Somebody else can see you being strong in that adversity, and then God can build from you into other people. You can speak life in other people because of your experiences. So stand strong. Cast your anxiety on Jesus Christ. He cares for you. His care is all around you. If you're going through a hard time, don't just ball up in a corner and weep. Go to your Lord. He cares for you. He's all around you. And look at this. Zechariah 2.8. These are some of my favorite verses. You are the pupil of his eye. How's he going to see what I'm doing, Rob? You're the pupil of his eye. In Psalm 56.8, it says, he models your tears. And I even pulled that one here. I wanted to read that. Do you have anybody that cares for you enough to say when you're crying that we're going to put your tears in a bottle so that they remember every tear and what it stood for? Well, Jesus Christ does that. David writes in Psalm 56, List my tears on your scroll. Are they not in your record? But look at this. Then my enemies will turn back when I call for help. By this, I will know that God is for me. In God, whose word I praise, in the Lord, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. What? man can do to me. Stand strong. God is perfecting you. He's working in your life. He's going to establish you. He's going to make you strong in the face of adversity. He's going to make you a foundation for others to build on when they see your strength. So hang in there. Have a great day.